Hello, and uh, today we're going to be learning about how variables are controlled. And the objectives for this lesson are to analyze variables in an experiment and to design simple controlled, a simple controlled experiment. And these objectives will be accomplished in class. And in this podcast, I'll just be um, sharing information that you need to know in order to accomplish those objectives. And I'll be doing that today through First of all, by showing you an old commercial, and the commercial refers to an experiment which you don't say all that much about, but we're going to see what the variables would be in an experiment that uh, this uh, ad sort of refers to. Chew on this. The average American eats five times a day. Five times, and only brushes twice. Chewing Trident after eating can help you fight cavities five times a day. Yep, Trident helps you fight cavities. So every time you eat, chew on this. Trident. Okay, well, first of all, in that, exp in that uh, ad, they don't really say anything at all about the experiment. They just simply state a conclusion. And I'm going to treat this like an actual experiment. And what needs to be done with this. If you want to see the want to see it over again yourself, you can go back or over here I have the address as to where that commercial came from. And here's the hypothesis that chewing trident gum fights cavities. Okay, here's the hypothesis for the experiment that sort of was where they had a conclusion in the ad, though they didn't actually say any details about any experiment, or whether they actually did an experiment. Um, so, first of all, there are two variables found in every single hypothesis. The first is the independent variable. And this one, the value is set at the beginning of the experiment, or is set by the scientists. Its value is independent of the other variable in the hypothesis, which is why it's called the independent variable. Second one is called the dependent variable, and these are your results. And the va its value depends on the variable in the hypothesis. Now, it, in what I have up here on the screen, and you should also put in your notes, uh, the reason why I bolded the last two bullets is because you use those in order to identify which is which is in the hypothesis, because you always find this in the hypothesis. Sometimes you'll find a, th a third variable. This third variable will be one of the constant variables, and we'll discuss that in the next screen. So if you look at this, look at the hypothesis. There are two things that can change, two variables. One is that uh, one is the type of gum, because you could chew Trident gum, you could chew another brand of gum, or you could not chew any gum at all. And the second variable is that this gum will fight cavities or it may fail to fight cavities. And you have to ask yourself, which is dependent on the other? Is the type of gum that you're the type of gum that you're chewing determined by your the cavities, whether or not you get cavities, or is the type of gum that you're chewing uh, determine that uh, whether or not you get cavities. Well, in here, you sort of you can tell, and also you'd be setting, ex you can sort of tell here that the trident, the, what type of gum you're chewing, be it trident or another kind, that is the independent variable. It's set by the by the scientists. Like you, if you were doing this, you would decide uh, what kind of gum is being used, and you would sort of decide who get, who gets which. And whether or not, and whether or not uh, the cavities are successfully fought, how many cavities someone got is another way of stating it. Is would be the dependent variable that is your results. Third variable are the constant variables, and these are all the other variables in there, and you have to treat them the same for all trials. If you don't, then things will be messed up. And we'll see that we'll see why in class tomorrow. Now here are some constant variables, and there are so many more than this. And usually on uh, an exam, you'll be asked for two. So one would be when gum when gum is chewed. An example of this would be after meals. 
how much gum is chewed, an example of that would be one stick of gum. How long someone chews the gum, an example would be five minutes. Subject's knowledge of what she or he is chewing, like they don't know. Because some t and just think about this, if you um, don't know what, if you know what it is, then your knowledge may affect what, what actually happens. Um, you'll see a bit more of this uh, tomorrow in the demonstration that we do. And number five, the scientist's knowledge of what subjects are chewing during experiment. Example, they, they don't, the scientist doesn't know. And this is something where probably, if they did the experiment in Trident, that probably was not occurring because like Trident, they, if they're doing this experiment, they're doing it to make sure that people actually uh, bought their gum. So the scientists knew which was which was which, and by the way they presented the gum, they may have affected the experiments. And it's important they they don't know. Like even if there's even if um, the scientist doesn't have like uh, as much of a stake in it as a as a company would, they they still may. Um, like unconsciously or without really knowing it uh, affect the experiment by treating this by treating the subjects differently for one type of gum as the other type of gum and other things too like well, the type of toothpaste that's used when brushing if they're using different toothpaste then that the ch amount of cavities could be due to how much uh, to, to, due to what toothpaste is being used there are some other features that are important in a controlled experiment, and one is that you use a control group, and this gives you something to compare. In the control group, the value of the independent variable is zero. So in the Trident experiment, the control group would be the group which doesn't, which doesn't chew Trident. It either doesn't chew, chew anything at all, or it would be chewing uh, non-Trident gum. And uh, the, you also have an experimental group, and an experimental group would be the group that is chewing Trident, and there could be different values in that, like different flavors of Trident. There might be different for different flavors. Another important thing that's included, particularly when you're, using, when you're doing trials with medicine to see if a medicine works, is to use a placebo. A placebo is fake medicine. And usually it's something like a sugar pill, something that does nothing. And that's because someone taking medicine is another variable. Some people get better. Like they've done experiments where people are sick and they, some people are given a placebo, other people get, are given nothing, and the people who get the placebo actually get, have a better chance of getting better than the people who took nothing. So a placebo is very important in this type of thing. And it's also important to have large sample sizes. And it's important that the experiment be repeated. Last two are things to, are very important things to remember if, uh, if there's a question on the regions and they ask you, how can you improve the experiment? These last two are things which will almost always give you a correct answer if you re repeat the experiment or increase the sample size. And here is a Regents essay question, and I'll go through this for you. And it says, the concentration of salt in water affects the hatching of brine shrimp eggs. Brine shrimp eggs will develop and hatch at room temperature in glass containers of salt solution. Described a controlled experiment using three experimental groups that could be used to determine the best concentration of salt solution in which to hatch brine shrimp eggs. Your answer should include at least, and I'm going to answer it after each one, a description of how the control group and each of the three experimental groups will be different. Okay, so if we look at this, the, co the control group is where it should be zero. And look at this, we're trying to find out um, what the best salt concentration is. So that's the thing the scientist is changing. That is the independent variable. So that's the thing that we're changing. The control group would have no salt at all, and each of the experimental groups would be different in the amount of salt that they have. 
So that's the answer for the first one. Second bullet, two conditions that must be kept constant in the control group and in the experimental groups. Well, one would be um, the type of brine shrimp. There are many types of brine shrimp. And another thing that should be kept constant could be something like the pH or the amount of acidity in the water. Because that, so that's something else that could affect it. Um, well, you may not know what acid about acidity at this point. Uh, another thing that they mentioned is they mentioned uh, temperature. So the temperature needs to be kept constant. That's something else you could think of. Uh, data that should be collected is would be the number of eggs that hatch it, that hatch. And an example of experimental results that would indicate the best concentration of salt solution in which to hatch the brine shrimp eggs. And an example would be that um, you've got one the best con one is the best concentration would just simply have more eggs hatched than the than all the other concentrations and the control. Here are the questions that I'd like you to answer and hand in tomorrow. And if you don't remember, then j just uh, go back to watch the clip over again. And you need to just write down some definitions. You need to define independent variable, dependent variable, constant variable, placebo, experimental group, and control group. So just answer those, and I will see you tomorrow.